Earlier in this course, I emphasized the importance of no longer seeing color as just a hue, but rather as the combination of hue, saturation, and brightness. So when looking at one of the most prevalent color mistakes, we can see the range of colors only shifts to create form and value based on the brightness by either adding white for the lit areas or adding black for the shadow areas. But that's only working with one of the three aspects of color, and while it does create a nice value contrast, it leaves the object feeling lifeless and oftentimes dull. So let's talk about the remaining two aspects of hue and saturation shifting. Hue shifting creates the illusion of form not from brightness, but rather a gradual contrast and shift in hues. While we can see something about this sphere looks kind of flat, it still gives the illusion of a sphere in 3D space, and we'll talk about why that is in just a second. The last aspect is saturation shifting, and this creates the illusion of form neither from brightness or hues changing, but rather the range of saturation a particular hue has. This one also reads a bit flat, but still gives the viewer an impression of form through the saturation contrast. And this shifting is seen as the hardest one to control and convey, but when used with purpose, it can easily be the defining point in your piece and the area of interest the viewer will be drawn to. So what's the reason behind the hue and saturation shifting looking so flat? It's because they literally have no brightness variation at all. Don't believe me? Well, let's see what these forms look like in grayscale. You can see how the first two appear flat, yet the third one does create a nice value representation. This is why the term brightness and value oftentimes get confused with each other. So if only brightness showcases true value shifts, then why do we even need saturation or hue shifting? Because without them, your subject matters will end up looking boring. So while each aspect creates a visual illusion of form, they are just lacking being on their own. But what about if we combined all three theories? What if we took what made each aspect so great and combined them to create one theory of using color? That's when we get the idea of HSB shifting, or as we've now come to know it, color shifting. The results use all three aspects of hue, saturation, and brightness to create the image. And you can see how this mix seems to breathe life when there is a combination of the three. And that's why we're calling it color shifting, because it's no longer just relying on the brightness to give value, and it's providing much more variation to our color selection. So how did we choose these colors specifically? Well, here's the old brightness shifting palette right above our new color shifting palette. When incorporating hue shifting, it's best to bend the colors in the light source towards warm colors, mainly yellow, and then the colors in the shadows towards cool colors such as blue or purple. This can depend on the lighting scenario, but a general rule is that if the light source is warmer, the shadow should be cooler, and vice versa. In terms of saturation, this also depends on the light source, but let's take an example of sunlight. When it lands on a surface like a wooden bench, the white of the light oftentimes will wash the color and result in a brighter result, but with less saturation. I have also seen shadows being closer to the true hue identity of the subject matter, which often is more saturated than the area in light. Now, this doesn't apply to every scenario, and as we'll talk about in the lighting affecting color lesson, we can also see that the area where the light and shadow meet are seen as the most saturated, especially in cases of subsurface scattering. Now, you may be thinking, alrighty, but why is there this intense purple in the shadow area? How does that even apply to realistic rendering? And you're correct. While an area in this placement would receive some bounce lighting and even a hint of cool color placement, the exaggeration of purple here is the result of fantastical intuition, and we're going to explore that further in our next lesson.